Hey, everybody. My name is Justin. And I'm Eric. And we are Air Truth Radio, broadcasting at you live at 8 p.m. Eastern Standard Time on the one and only Blog Talk Radio. I just wanted to get these things out of the way real quick before we get started. You can find us on Facebook and you can find us on Twitter. You can also find us on Tumblr right now as well as LinkedIn. Just type Paratruth Radio and you'll find us. There's just way too many links to read out on the air. Um, you can also email us at paratruthradio at gmail.com if you guys ever have any questions whatsoever, any guest requests or guest suggestions, go ahead and hit us up on there. You can also uh, hop into our chat room and give us questions or questions for our guest. And uh, you can also call in at 914-455-558 and to talk to us that way. We also have a huge thing going on today. We're having a, a uh, giveaway contest for our decorative Eddie the Bigfoot Perigrio plate. If you're interested in that, we'll be that one in the show. And, um, we'll be giving that away to one lucky listener. How your week been there, Mr. Uh, it's been all right so far. Uh, it feels kind of weird because uh, I don't know if I told you, but this past week I at work since we leave for school and all next week. Oh. So it feels kind of weird that I'm not going to be working for the next three and a half months. <laughs> <laughs> After 10 years of working steadily. <laughs> like, hmm. Well, it's going to be a good one for you, Coach. Just getting back into what you originally started. Yeah. I'm looking forward. It should be pretty fun and interesting. Got a lot of work ahead of me, though, between this next, well, within the next week here. Right. Still haven't packed anything yet. <laughs> for those who don't know what we're talking about, Eric actually started school uh, for uh, cinematography. Um, and he eventually went into uh, what's the studies for parish? Uh, it was called just religious arts. Uh, it basically associates degree in religion and allows you to work within the Christian history. So. And now he's going back to his roots of. Oh, yeah. <laughs> so uh, tonight, uh, we've got a great guest on. Um, we've got Jody Cook. Jody, are you with us? Yeah, I'm here. All right, Jody. For those of uh, our listeners who haven't heard of you or heard of any of your books, why don't you give us a little breakdown of who you are? <laughs> um, well, I've been doing um, Bigfoot research and cryptozoology research for about 25 years. Um, I've written several books on um, Bigfoot um, in Ohio, basically, Um hmm. I did a book called The Beginner's Guide to Bigfoot Research, which is, you know, it's, it's basically a teaches you, I hate to use that word, but kind of gets you along more or less on how to do Bigfoot research because we, we do things a little bit different than um, what the people in the paranormal field, you know, does. We Our, our equipment's a lot right. different and things like that. So basically it's just, it, it, it's, it's um, basic common sense stuff on, you know, how to talk to, um, a witness, how to, you know, do a report when you talk to a witness, you know, what to look for when you're in the field doing an investigation, um, you know, what type of equipment to use, how, you know, the proper way of making a cast, which is, you know, there really is no proper way, but some of the best techniques to do it. Um, things, you know, just, just basic common sense stuff to use out in the field. Um, i written a book called Wing entities uh it's a case book of different sightings across the united states and around the world on winged creatures like um your mothman type creatures uh uh jersey devil gargoyle type things uh thunderbirds um any any type of uh creature that had a wing you know wings to it <clears throat> and uh it's a pretty good case book i there's a lot of good information in there um they're just small little stories of you know um about the the date the location and you know basically what happened um there's no pictures in it it's just basically you know you got to read it so <laughs> um yeah. i did uh another book um called humanoid encounters which is um it's a two part book and that that basically deals with anything that was um 
type, a humanoid type creature, either if it was mm. a ghost or a uh, Bigfoot, um, you know, um, the lizard man or, you know, an alien, you know, whatever, anything that appeared to someone in a uh, humanoid, uh, uh, you know, image and stuff. So uh did one or two series on that one. And those are case books also, which is, you know, location, you know, uh, where it was and a little bit about it. Mm-hmm. And stuff, and um, oh, I did one cryptid Ohio about all the different cryptids in Ohio, um, and then I'm just finishing up on one called the Mothman case book, which is just dealing with Mothman sightings in the um, in Middle America, you know. Okay. So it, it, it it's kind of interesting, and I put out a magazine called Cryptid Seekers Magazine, which is um, okay. just a lot of cryptid stuff. So. It, yeah, it's 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 a hobby, so Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, um I've followed you since I interviewed you on my other show site radio, mostly because Bigfoot then a little bit than I am now and I'm originally from Ohio and you're from Ohio, so it kind of piqued my interest yeah. a lot. Um why did you have to uh concentrate more on the Bigfoot compared to Cryptids when you first started searching. Okay, you're breaking up like really bad um, and stuff. Um, I, I think what you were saying, why was I doing more on the Bigfoot than the cryptid stuff? Yes. Okay. Um, I, I, you know, I, I did. I was doing Bigfoot stuff for a long time. You know, um, before I did the Bigfoot stuff, I was a UFO investigator. Did a lot of UFO stuff for quite a few years, and. Um, just doing the Bigfoot stuff, I found it really interesting. Um, it's kind of an addicted um, subject to get into because there's just so much stuff, you know, about it, and it's so fascinating. Um, and, you know, throughout the years, you, you get different cryptid sightings, you know, because when you're on an investigation, someone wants to tell you about, you know, uh, another type of cryptid sighting that they had. And um, so, you know, I – started to do a little bit more of the cryptid stuff. Uh, another thing in Ohio where we have a lot of sightings of is what we call dog man, which is like a, a werewolf type creature. And um, Ohio has a lot of, a lot of sightings. And um, actually I wrote a book on werewolves and um, I'm finishing up on one on, on the dog man stuff. And, um, it, it, you know, it, it's it's an interesting hobby, and it's just like it all goes – it's all part of cryptozoology, you know. So you kind of mm. – you know, you can't do one without the other. I mean, it's really hard, you know, for a lot of, you know, researchers just to stick to one subject. you got some out there that's like diehard Bigfoot investigators, and they don't want to touch anything else. And, you know, that that's fine. You know, but, you know, you, you can't ignore the other stuff that's popping up in front of you, you know. Right. So – But uh, that's basically basically it. I mean, I, I find it fascinating. I, you know, it, it, it it's really uh, really fascinating. Now, um, have has anyone come forward with significant documentation of any of these creatures? I know, like often when you're watching television shows, uh, like on Destination America, for example, um, and a number of other different shows, there's eyewitnesses that claim to have video evidence, but none of the video evidence actually clear, per se. It's always fuzzy, yeah, I, always a little distorted. I mean, have you come across anything that's somewhat significantly... Well, yeah, you know, I I mean, not... not. I can't really say it's really die-hard evidence. I mm-hmm. mean, I, I was on an investigation, you know, um, and... I got. I was able. To, well, I was doing my investigation in the town I was in. I was able to talk to a couple of different people, and I was end up talking to this older couple. Um, at the time, they were oh, probably in their late sixties, early seventies, and they go, "Well, I want to show you something." And we went back, you know, to their house, and they pull out this like sixteen millimeter film, you know. And mm. they hooked it up to the projector and stuff, and you know they put the white sheet up on the wall and things, and you know and they you know they said this was um, back in um, you know the early '60s, and it was here in Ohio, 
and you know the husband was driving you know and the wife was video you know or not videotaped but you know filming them and you know they're he's making you know mm-hmm. all these faces and just you know they're just having a good old time you know with this 16 millimeter right. camera and they go to where this railroad crossing was and he, you know, pulls up and he's acting like, you know, all the cars died and stuff. And, you know, she, you see her touching her, you know, his shoulder, you know, you know, pointing, you know, mm-hmm. turn around, turn around. He's like, you know what? You know, like, I guess there's a train coming and stuff. And he wouldn't turn around and finally he turns <laughs> around. And I mean, she's has a Bigfoot. It was coming down the railroad tracks, you mm-hmm. know, and I mean, it was, it was, it was the most beautiful piece of evidence I've ever seen. I mean, it, okay. it, it was, but it was black and white, you know, 16 millimeter. Um, uh, but it, I mean, you you could see it clear as day, and it it was just standing there on the tracks, and they they hauled right off, they they gunned it right off the tracks there, and mm-hmm. um, it's where they were pulling in. It was you know one of these small little roads, and you know um, it was like cut through like a um, you know two hillsides maybe. You know the yeah. best way to describe it because with the tracks they, there was hills on both sides of the tracks, you know. Okay. So um, you know, but it was it was walking down the tracks there, and but they wouldn't they didn't want to give it up. Uh, they didn't want to show it to anybody. You know they they felt that um, you know they would be laughed at and you know uh, golfed at and things like that. And you know right. I mean I tried everything to get the you know to get it from them. <laughs> And, huh. you know, they wouldn't – and, you know, that was the best piece of, I can say, evidence I've ever seen, you know, of, of a right. of a true Bigfoot. You know, I mean, it, it really made the Patterson film – and I tell people this. It really made the Patterson film look like, you know, crap, you know, yeah. compared to – I mean, you know, to, to this thing. Um, the only other hardcore stuff I've got um, is, you know, I wrote the FBI under the Freedom of Information – about Bigfoot, because um, mm-hmm. I I I was a you know deputy sheriff for a few years, and I I you know knew some guys you know with the FBI, and I was talking to them. And they they kind of joked about it, you know, that these documents exist and stuff. So I wrote them under the Freedom of Information Act, and um, you know, lo and behold, they they've got documentation on it. Um, they sent me like 28 copies of um just garbage blacked out garbage stuff mm-hmm. but there's 2000 plus documents that are still considered classified with the FBI on the subject of Bigfoot mm-hmm. now wow. um is the FBI looking for Bigfoot no they're not the reason why they ha- you know they're they're classified either that there was an investigation going on by the FBI and um you know, an FBI agent being a thorough individual, when he does a report, he documents everything he sees. He they right. don't leave anything out. So they could have seen one. They could have ran across one. It could have happened on government land, um, you know, anything. You know, it was just something that was put into a report to either, you know, the, the agents are still under are, – are doing undercover work and you can't release it because it gives the name of the agent for his safety, you know, things like that. You know, just things I under, you know you can basic understand, but that that is about the only hardcore evidence I think I've ever, besides that film that I saw about um, about Bigfoot. Okay. So, but there, you know, there's there's the, the odd thing about the um, the file is they 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 come in what they call serials. Okay. <laughs> You know, serial one, serial two, serial three, and and that's what the FBI calls a file. They call them serials. And in this particular um, ser- um, um, files, number four was missing. Mm-hmm. Uh, I mean, they sent me stuff from serial one, serial two, serial three, and things, just like little odds and end pieces of garbage. Uh, but serial four was, they said, was completely missing. They said there was, um, it might have accidentally got, you know, sterilized. You know, I mean, they, I mean, they just came up with some real bogus stuff. Why this whole file was missing? And to me, there, there's something in that file. And what I believe that was in serial number four was, 
there was an incident that took place in Smoky Mountains back in uh, 60, 67 or 68. I can't remember off the top of my head. Um, by a little boy by the name of Dennis Lloyd Martin um, came up missing um, in the Smoky Mountains of Tennessee. And what happened was um, the little boy ran off with two other little boys in the campgrounds to go play. Mm-hmm. The two little boys come back without the Martin child. And the father's like, where's my son? And he said, well, you know, he went into the woods and he never came out. You know, they tried looking for him and stuff, and they couldn't find him, so they came back, you know, to tell him what was going on. And so the father ran like about two miles into the woods looking for his kid and couldn't find his child. So they call the rangers. The rangers, um, you know, get a search and rescue team to go out there and look. And right at the time um, that – the kids were running back um, to tell the parents what was happening. There was a mother and a father and a daughter was in a different location of the park uh, just on a trail, and they seen what they say was a Bigfoot running up the hill with a child on its shoulders, a little Mm -hmm. boy. Now, the FBI, because of a missing child, the FBI was called in. Um, Now, when the FBI interviewed a lot of people, they interviewed that particular family, and but the FBI failed to tell the parents of the missing child that um, you know this family saw a Bigfoot with a little boy that matched the description of his son, and Mm -hmm. um, so the father basically found out um, that. You know, there was an eyewitness to it, and he went to the FBI, and the FBI told him it was insignificant to the investigation. That's why they never told him. So basically they're saying they blew it off. But hmm. the lead FBI agent for that investigation ended up killing himself, which is kind of strange. Really? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. He ended up killing <laughs> himself. But, you know, when um, they – the FBI sent in a mic force from the special forces. At the time, they were called Green Berets. Um, mm-hmm. The U- United States military never called special forces special forces until um, the late 70s, early 80s. Right, is when right. They went the name, and that's when they started wearing the rocker special forces. And from there on, they were always known as Green Berets. Well, this Green Beret task force comes in you know, full battle rattle, you know, weapons and ammunition stuff. And, you know, they're going out looking for this kid, which, for one, it's against the law um, for U.S. forces to participate in something like that unless it's a national emergency, especially being in the field with weapons. Mm -hmm. Uh, So, and the special forces would not allow the – uh, park district search and rescue team to go out into the field at all to search for this kid. They did everything. So they were out there for about a week and then came back in. Mm-hmm. And whatever information they had or whatever, no one knows about it. You know, so, right. uh, Just... yeah, so, I mean, it's it's it, it's a very interesting case. Till this day, there's still a $2,500 reward for the whereabouts or anybody knows anything about the missing child, wow. you know, by, by the FBI. <laughs> yeah. Right. So, I mean, there, there's a lot of, and so, so that particular file should have been in the stuff that I wanted for a Freedom of Information Act. Mm-hmm. So it should have been there. So I'm thinking it was in serial number four and, you know, they weren't going to give that up. They just said, well, right. the file accidentally got sterilized. You know, or it's still part of that 2,000 classified documents. So there's something to it because, like you said, there's a lot of odd stuff that uh, that that's going on with that case. You know, the right. FBI told the family they're not to talk to the two families were not allowed to talk to each other. I mean, it's just a lot of weird stuff. You know. Yeah. Right. So. Yeah. All right. Well, I think we're going to take our first break. So hold on there with us, Jody. Um, folks, you're listening to Paratruth Radio right here on Blog Talk Radio. 
Uh, we're going to have Eric's random fact of the day and a little bit of music, and uh, we'll be right back. Now, Eric's random fact of the day. Did you know that Galileo Galilei is often incorrectly credited with the invention of the telescope? After some newer evidence, historians now believe that the Dutch eyeglass maker, Johannes Lippershe, is the original creator of the optical instrument. However, Galileo still gets the credit for being the first person to use the historic device to study the heavens.
All right, folks. Welcome back to Paratruth Radio right here on Blog Talk Radio. That was early clear by the Upside Down. I do have to encourage you guys that uh, we are on Facebook. We are on Twitter. We are also on Tumblr. We're also on LinkedIn. Check us out on all of those sites. You can also find us at uh, paratruthradio at gmail.com if you guys ever have any questions, any concerns, any guest suggestions. We are very open to anything. You also can call us at our guest call-in number during our live shows at 914-205-5558. You can also hop in our chat, and uh, that phone number is going to be very important just before the next break to do our giveaway, so uh, stay tuned for that for when we announce it. Mm -hmm. Uh, We've been talking to Jody Cook. Jody, are you still with us? Yep, I'm still here. All right. uh, Go ahead, Eric. Hi. Um, now, I I just read on NBM Entertainment that uh, you used to be a member of the Cincinnati UFO Research Group, ASK, correct? Yeah. Um, now, this is my question, and this is something that's – I've noticed this come up a lot between people who study UFOs and people who study cryptids. And one of the beliefs is the possibility that Bigfoot, Sasquatch, the Grassman, are actu- actually extraterrestrial beings – and that's why it's hard to find these creatures, um, much harder than, you know, it, uh, I should say that no one's actually, actually actually captured one. But people think that they're aliens of some sort. And what is your thought on that? You know, I, I did UFO research um, for about five years. And, mm-hmm. you know, we, we, we had our own public access TV show. And this was before cable and stuff came out. <laughs> you know, um, well, I can't say it's before cable because cable was out, but um, it, a lot of people were uh, was doing a lot of stuff on public access TV, right. you know, yeah. and um, we had a live TV show that we did like the first Wednesday of every month. And mm-hmm. you know, we always had, you know, um, someone on the show you, when you could call in stuff. And, and we were getting a lot of Bigfoot sightings, okay, from the show. Okay, now that was why I was doing – I kind of got into the Bigfoot stuff. Mm-hmm. Um, me personally, I do not think that there's a Bigfoot UFO connection. I okay. think it's all coincidental. okay? It's just something that happened at the same time. Um, I won't touch a Bigfoot report or do an investigation where a UFO is involved, okay? Mm-hmm. And the reason why I say that is, um, I, you know, I mean, let me see. I mean, the possibility, you know, of, of a connection, um, they could be something there. Um, but I don't, I don't believe they're extraterrestrial. I don't believe that they're, you know, um, you know, convicts from some planet that's dumped off to Earth. You know, mm-hmm. I just think if there's any connection to them, it's because they're being abducted, too. Okay. That's, that, that is the only connection, I, I think, when it comes to UFO and Bigfoot, is that they're, they're being abducted and they're getting, you know, experiments done on them. You know, or they're abducting them and using them for you know, some type of heavy labor or something like that, you know, mind control, you know, uh, maybe their minds are weak, you know, I, you know, you know, the thing about Bigfoot, I, I, I believe they have common sense, but I don't think mm-hmm. they have intelligence. Okay. okay. Obviously extraterrestrials have intelligence. Okay. Mm-hmm. So, but that, that's my only belief in the two, uh, uh of the connection. And, you know, I, I get a lot. I, I talk to a lot of people. I mean, I just, you know, I just did, um, for like the first issue of uh, Crypto Seekers magazine, um, there was an article in there about UFO Bigfoot connection, you know, um, that someone wrote for the um, for the magazine, which was, which was pretty good. He, you know, he kind of made, you know, the same sense what I was talking about, you know, mm-hmm. that you know they may be getting abducted too, and that's why you know you see a Bigfoot with a UFO. Now I've talked to people that swear that you know. They seen a UFO and the door opens and here comes a Bigfoot out, you know, <laughs> and stuff. But, but like I said, I just, you know, I, I just have a hard time believing that 
you know, these things are aliens, <laughs> you know, right. and, and, and things. Um, I mean, I really believe they're flesh and blood, mm-hmm. you know, creature. They're they're an ape, you know, uh, that, that's part man, and they're something that, that was always here, okay. you know. So. Mm-hmm. so in your opinion, why have we not caught one alive yet or even remains of one? Well, yeah. The, the the whole thing, you know, um, Mother Nature cleans up after herself. If we if okay. if she didn't, there'd be piles of bones all over the place. Okay. Right. Two, you have to look at the environment. Okay. Bones only stay preserved if they're buried in the ground. Mm-hmm. Okay. Or if they're buried in a dry environment like the mm-hmm. desert. Okay? Right. Okay. Now, na- in natural forests. You know, when something dies, within a week it's gone. You know, um, every little critter out there, even you know, porcupines and raccoons, they'll eat teeth. You know, they'll they'll oh. chew a knob on the bone to get the mural out of the bone. You mm-hmm. know, and stuff. So, and it, the body gets scattered. You know, and you know, through time, you know, um, through you know, uh, you know, the weather and the environment, you know, it it breaks it all down. You know, mm-hmm. and that's part of the reason why we don't find anything. But I think, you know, my belief is I think they bury their dead. You know, um, I think they're I, I I think they have enough common sense, and I think they have feelings like we do that okay. when a loved one is lost, you know, to per, to to make sure that scavengers don't eat it, you know, mm-hmm. they bury it. You know, and and I, I really believe that. You know, um, but as far as you know, why we haven't found any? I'll if I if I had a million dollars, it's just to lay down on the table and say, I guarantee, inside the Smithsonian Institute, there's partial remains of one. Okay, okay. I I would I would lay a million dollars on the table to say that, because the thing about the Smithsonian Institute, they're still today documenting stuff from paper to the computers. And it's going to take them a very, very long time right. to get it done. And they only put out a specimen if they have more than one. So they have a lot more stuff that's in crates and packed up under, you know, stairwell that it's only one specimen. And they won't put it out until, you know, they get a second one to put out. And and mm-hmm. honestly, when I talk to the Smithsonian you know, a lot of these care raters are saying they, they're they're stuff there. They you know, they don't even know what's there. You know, <laughs> and, and things, Uh-oh. and that you know, and I mean, because there's just so much stuff. I mean, the Smithsonian right. Institute is like levels and levels and levels and levels underground. You know, mm-hmm. parts. I mean, where they store everything. You know, and I mean, the Smithsonian is just so huge. You know. um, and, and the like I said, the possibility of uh, you know, I mean, you have to think about when they when they started collecting specimens, you know, mm. the Smithsonian did, and what they got from a lot of their stuff they got from you know private collectors, you know, things right. like that, you know, and and stuff, and uh, it's it's you know it's surprising, you know, what uh, what you may find there, you know, and like they said, there's there's just so much stuff they just don't know what's all there. Mm-hmm. You know that's why they're still they're cataloging everything. And it's going right. to take a long time to do it. Yeah. So. But I hope that answered your question. <laughs> yeah. Well, like for the live ones, though, is are they just that elusive that we're not coming across them enough to catch the a live one? Or well, you know, the thing of it is, you know, I, what I one thing I tell people about you know Bigfoot research is, you know, if you go out looking for it, you're not going to find it. Okay. okay. You're only, I mean, if, it's going to be by accident. It, it really is. You know, now, you know, my sighting that I had, uh, I was in the Army. I had three other guys with me, and, you know, we were probably within 12 to 15 feet of it. Okay. And um, he blended in with the environment. I mean, completely blended in. And if he would not have moved, we would never seen him we would have went right past him and the wow. fact that he moved was what caught our eyes 
we thought actually we thought a tree was coming down, you know, coming down on us. I mean, I mean, he was that he was that big, you know, and 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 that's the thing. I mean, it's like you're you're out in the woods, and then a deer runs out in front of you, mm-hmm. you know, right. and, you know, because it's it was there the whole time. You just never saw it. He just blend in with the environment until you got close enough to him. He got spooked, you know, and and that's right. happened to people. You know who who are out in the woods and things like that. I mean, you know the the, the thing about the woods is just you know your eye only see the, the how can I say it? Your eye will train on something that's familiar, you know, a body right. shape, face, yeah. or things like that. And you know if if you're out in the woods just looking around and you don't see it, your eye don't catches it. You're you're not going to get it, you know, and because they're just because. There's so much stuff in the woods, trees, I mean, trees, um, leaves, branches, you know, bushes and stuff like that. It, it's, it takes time for your eyes to, to focus on it, especially when you're moving. And if you're not going to be, if, if you're not staring at one object and then moving to another and then moving to another, your eyes, you're not going to catch what's there. And, and mm-hmm. that's the biggest thing. Now, as far as why we've never gotten one, I, I, I me personally, I, I, I think our government – has one or has more than one okay you know i i i you know um i really believe they do i i believe somewhere out there there is a insulation that um you ever seen the movie ice man cometh uh, i i have not i don't think i have okay, either where, where they well what it was this government agency they they found a caveman Okay, frozen in ice. They brought him back to life, you know, um, and they they had him in this, you know, um, this facility that was shaped like a forest. It had a running water. It had a cave, you know. It, it had trees and everything. They would put, you know, animals in there for them to hunt and things like that. It was a really interesting, to- you know, story. But I, I really believe our government has something like that set up where they where they have these creatures in there, you know, and they're studying them, you know, mm-hmm. um, That's a good, I, good I, it sounds far fetched. It really does. But I, but you know, you, you got to understand, you know, you know, uh, you got to understand our government, man. <laughs> you know, <Yeah. laughs> you know, I mean, I, you know, don't get me wrong. I'm, I'm pro American and I love my country. I spent, you know, 20 years in the army, you know, uh, I fought in Iraq, you know, um, uh, you know, I, I'm pro constitution, but I, you know, I just right. don't trust my government. Okay, right. and you know, and things, and you know, for them to have, so I, I, I wouldn't put it past them. You know. Okay. Well, uh, so I, I, I am kind of with you there. I, I love being an American, but I think our government hides a lot from us. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, the, the 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 biggest thing, and you know, the, when I was doing UFOs, you know. Mm-hmm. Um, we dealt with a lot of abductees, you know, okay. that were coming on the show talking. And I am a firm believer that our government, you know, let these extraterrestrials abduct people on the return for military technology, um, engineering technology, medical technology, whatever. You know, just give us this and – Pick up who you want and do what you want. Just don't kill them, you know. And right. I, I, I believe that, you know. Um, I, you know, I can see or go. I mean, I, any government would have done would do that, you know. Um, but you know, I, I really believe our government did, you know, did do that. Yeah. So, you know. Yeah. Well, it's, to me, anything is a possibility. So mm-hmm. that that could be one huge possibility for as much technology advancements as we as we've had in the past say 10 years so yeah exactly i mean, well you, you th- think about the 1960s okay you know um the space race you know mm-hmm. look how right. fast technology went look at transistors you know um you know night vision things like that things that you right. know i mean we moved extremely extremely fast you know right. um here we are, you know, we went to the moon, you know, which I don't believe, I don't believe it ever happened, but, you know, yeah. um, 
but it, you know, look at our space technology now. You know, why right. have we never went to the moon? You know, or go back to the moon? You yeah. Know, so, but you know, we we we, you know, we got technology somewhere. Right. You know. Mm-hmm. So. We got it All right. somewhere. Yeah. <laughs> Um, I think we're going to take our last break here, Jody, so stick with us. We'll be right back. Folks, you're listening to Paratruth Radio right here on Blog Talk Radio. We are opening up the truth lines. That's what I'm going to start calling them, the truth lines. Nice. 914-205-5558. And uh, caller number, who do you want, Eric? Uh, Let's see, number three. All right, caller number three will get the uh, decorative plates that we are giving away if you don't win the first time just keep calling back and when we get caller number three we will announce that winner on air Uh, and uh, we'll be back in just a few minutes Hello everybody, Sublimely Elegant here, as always, and guess what? I know you. Well, no, we've never met, but I do know you. I know you love Minecraft. I know you love the internet. Now, I also happen to know you love colorful language. So, instead of moping around all day, why don't you head on over to my channel and satiate your deepest needs. YouTube.com forward slash Sublimely Elegant.
means unfortunately we did not have a winner uh so next week uh we'll try giving our uh, decorative plate of eddie the big toy away again uh to all of our podcast listeners definitely turn in live next week turn in live next week uh so that way you guys have a chance at winning that um mm-hmm. our phone number as always is 914-205-5558 um, and uh, you can also get in our chat and hit us up and we'll always be announcing stuff on Facebook, on Twitter and on Tumblr, all those good things. Um, we've had uh, Jody Cook on the line. Jody, you still with us? Yeah, definitely here. All right. Jody. All right. Um, before we wrap it up, I just wanted to give everybody uh, all the information where to find you and all of that. So where can people find you? Uh the best way right now is uh, Facebook. Um, I'm getting a new website up. Okay. Um, so they can just look for me on uh, Facebook um, is the best thing. Uh, they Either my name or uh, they can look for Crypto Seekers Magazine on Facebook, and they can uh, connect, uh, contact me through there. Uh, okay. My books can be found on uh, Amazon.com. Um, the magazine they can find um there's a link on Crypto Seekers magazine uh Facebook webpage on getting the magazine. It's a company called Mag Cloud. Um it's where a lot of uh paranormal magazines are a lot of people who do paranormal stuff, they can find it on there. So um okay. that's probably the best way right now to uh try and get a hold of me. So and I'll I'll be okay. speaking this year at the uh, Mothman Festival, um September twentieth and twenty first also. And is that in Ohio this year? No, it's in West Virginia. In West Virginia? Oh, okay. Yeah, point, yeah, well, point pleasant. It's on either one sometimes, cause, <laughs> or it could have been on either one because that's where it happened, the big yeah, one. Yeah, it's right it. there. Yeah, Galop- Galopolis. Uh, yeah. <laughs> it was just right across the river there. So everybody is staying on the Ohio side in the hotels and going <laughs> to the uh, – yeah. So yeah, it's kind of interesting, Yeah. <laughs> Um, well, one question I had really quick before we let you go um, is if Bigfoot is real, and I am a little bit of a skeptic when it comes to Bigfoot, why are so many people out there hoaxing? You know what? They're idiots. Um, I mean, you know, that's the plain thing. They're just they're just idiots. See, everybody <laughs> thinks that, you know, no, I'm, I'm serious. You know, there, there's no money to be made in this field. Okay. Yeah. There right. isn't, and and there right. are pe- people think that's how they're going to make a buck, you know. And then you got people out there who just are, you know, they do it for attention, nothing mm-hmm. more, you know. Yeah. And uh, that's why they do what they're doing. I, you know, it's just, you know, there's a guy that's been hoaxing stuff for, you know, um, for years, you know, and and the guy's making, you know, he is making money off it, but he just got himself in trouble, you know. Through the law, because he's right. charging people for the, you know to see a Bigfoot that doesn't exist, right? You know, a body is what I'm meaning. Um, right. Yeah. So, yeah. I mean, but you got to look at it this way. You you know you look at you know Destination America. You know they 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 got Mountain Monsters, which is a fake mm-hmm. show. I mean it. Right. You know they're coming out with a new one called Mon- Monsters Underground. You know which they got a um, Bigfoot researcher. You know whose credibility is you know in in the field is very questionable. I I don't know the guy. Um, I've never met the guy. I'm just going by what I'm hearing from other researchers. You know, and you know that show is is no more going to be no different from Mountain Monsters, which is you know the the thing of it is you know they, they've been no documentation whatsoever of reports or sightings of cryptid underground. You know, yep. living in caves and things like right. that. It's always been suggested, mm-hmm. 
you know, so uh, and then you have the show Cryptid. That's through the History Channel, which is, you know, paid. These guys are paid actors. It's, 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 a, you know, there's nothing real about it. You know, um, Finding Bigfoot. I mean, you know, I mean, there's just there, there's nothing real about these shows. And, right. You know, so that's that's the thing. You know, it's just if TV's hoaxing, you know, why not you? It's no different. Right. I mean, the legitimacy of 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 this field has really gone downhill. Yeah. And it's happening in a paranormal field. Well, you heard about Aaron getting fired from, um, um, oh, geez, what was that uh, he, uh, team he was on? Um, oh, I can't think of it real quick. There, it was on, it's on, like, Friday nights, um, Ghost Adventures. You know, oh, he got he, fired yeah, from there. He got, yeah, he got fired from the show because he was on a radio show giving an interview, and he did a 20-minute rant about, you know, uh, Travel Channel basically faking the stuff, you know, because, you know, they're adding stuff in that's not real, you know, and stuff. And he was just being honest. I mean, you you know, right. there's just no legitimacy anymore. So, Right. All right. Well, I want to thank you for being on the show. It's been a pleasure and an honor having you on. Hey, no problem. Anytime, brother. All yeah. right. Uh, you have yourself a good <laughs> night, and uh, hopefully we'll talk to you again soon. Hey, anytime. You guys have a good one. You too. Take care. All right. Bye. All right, folks. That was Jody Cook. He's our the resident Ohio Bigfoot expert, um, and uh, probably one of the better guests that we've had on um, since we started Paratruth. Just because he's obviously very honest and believes very passionately that there is a Bigfoot. Um, I still don't know if I'm that has convinced me at all of, of <laughs> not so much. And, but he does have a point just like Bigfoot, the paranormal field has kind of gone downhill with all the TV shows, any of the reality shows as, as they call them. Cause it's not reality in my definition. There's no such thing as a reality show. <laughs> <laughs> um, has just kind of, um, warped people's per- uh, perception of everything. Right. So, um, well, well it's, it's the entertainment world, and that's all it is. Right. You know, they're not going to get ratings if they don't have something happen. Right. So, well, um, folks, I did want to announce really fast uh, before we go off here in just a few minutes that uh, Chris O'Brien will be on the show next week. There was some complications, so that's why the show got canceled last week. Um, and uh, he will be a good guest. He's the author of Stalking the Herd. It's about the uh, cow mutilations that happened back in the 60s and 70s and 80s. And apparently, I won't get into the book, but it happened more times than that. Um, And uh, we'll also be giving away our decorative plate of Eddie the Bigfoot hugging the Paratruth logo. Um, Because everybody loves Paratruth. Everybody loves Paratruth, and there's quite a few people that love Bigfoot. <laughs> I mean, I love Paratruth, so everybody else has to love Paratruth. Well, if Bigfoot loves Paratruth, then of course everyone loves Paratruth. Right. So any of you that uh, listen to our pad- podcast, please listen live next Sunday at 8 p.m. Eastern Time. We will be giving that away live on air, uh, 914-205-5558, and you'll probably hear that phone number a hundred more times uh, Probably. before that plate is given away. Um, as always, you can find us on Facebook, you can find us on Twitter, uh, and now you can find us on Tumblr, and you can find us on LinkedIn. Uh, and if we're ever on air and you want to hop into our chat, we take questions for ourselves and the guests that way as well. Mm-hmm. And uh, email Parasite, or, ah, oh, God, I did it again. Parasite, <laughs> two, two ones. Paratruthradio at gmail.com. Um, so on that note, folks, my name is Justin. And I'm Eric. And uh, we are... Paratruth Radio. <laughs> I had to think about it. <laughs> Have a good night, folks. All right. Peace. <laughs>